We all witnessed the gigantic Starship lift off one more time just two days ago. It's mind-blowing to see a rocket the size of a 20-story building take off like it's nothing. SpaceX doesn't know how to rest. Right after achieving this milestone, they revealed their next ambitious goal for Starship, and it's nothing short of incredible. SpaceX plans to launch 100 Starships per year, aiming for 400 flights within the next four years. Yes, you heard that right. 100 launches annually by 2028. This announcement came directly from SpaceX President Gwyn Shotwell at the 31st Annual Barron Investment Conference. If achieved, it would be a feat beyond comparison, far surpassing Falcon 9's current record of 100 launches in a single year, which took over a decade to achieve. Its potential goes far beyond what Falcon 9 has accomplished. For starters, Starship is designed to carry over 100 satellites in a single flight, compared to the Falcon 9's capacity of 23. This means SpaceX can scale its Starlink constellation faster than ever. Many of you might be wondering, what's next for Starship after the successful completion of Flight 6? Musk and the SpaceX team are already looking ahead to what needs to be refined, tested, and achieved to make Starship fully operational. A key focus for SpaceX moving forward is the thermal protection system. Starship's heat shield, which protects it during re-entry, still has room for optimization. Starship's heat shield is essential for ensuring the spacecraft can withstand the extreme heat generated during atmospheric re-entry. While Mars has an atmosphere only 1% as dense as Earth's, the friction generated during entry can still produce temperatures between 1,200 degrees Celsius and 1,500 degrees Celsius. For SpaceX to meet its goal of launching reusable spacecraft capable of interplanetary missions, the heat shield must be both durable and lightweight. SpaceX recently conducted tests on the heat shield materials, simulating Martian atmospheric conditions. These tests involved exposing the materials to extreme heat in a thermal chamber, using flame generators to replicate re-entry temperatures. During the tests, the material cracked and melted, providing valuable data on its performance under stress. Musk hinted at the possibility of using a hybrid approach to thermal protection. This could involve combining metallic shielding with liquid film cooling to enhance heat resistance while reducing the system's mass. Such innovations could help SpaceX strike the right balance between durability and efficiency. Starship's current design includes over 18,000 heat shield tiles, each serving as a barrier against intense heat. However, replacing these tiles after every flight would be both expensive and time-consuming. For SpaceX to achieve its vision of frequent, low-cost launches, the heat shield must be fully reusable. After Flight 4, the company upgraded the heat shield with stronger flaps and additional protective layers. By Flight 5, these changes enabled Starship to achieve its first controlled vertical landing. For Flight 6, SpaceX went further by removing over 2,100 tiles in specific areas to test the system's resilience under extreme conditions. Each test provides critical data to refine the design and move closer to a reusable solution. Although the heat shields performed well during the latest Flight 6, there were notable issues related to the booster landing mechanism. Unlike the previous flight where the booster was successfully caught by the tower, this time SpaceX opted to splash it down in the ocean. Flight 6 took place on November 19th, consisting of Booster 13 and Ship 31 launching from SpaceX's Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas. Liftoff occurred at 4 p.m., and the early phases of the flight were smooth, with the rocket clearing the tower and reaching max Q. When the structural stress on the vehicle is at its highest, around one minute into the flight. As the flight progressed, the Super Heavy booster, equipped with its powerful Raptor engines, performed its main engine cutoff approximately two and a half minutes after liftoff. Stage separation occurred successfully, allowing the upper stage, Ship 31, to continue its ascent toward orbit. However, what happened with the booster was a different from SpaceX's earlier plans. While the previous flight successfully demonstrated the mid-air catch of the booster using the Mechazilla tower arms, the Flight 6 booster was not deemed ready for such an attempt. SpaceX opted to perform a controlled descent, culminating in a splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. 
The first and most likely reason is the damage observed during the liftoff of Flight 6. As the booster lifted off the pad, the immense thrust and heat generated by the 33 engines appeared to damage the lightning or communications tower on top of the integration tower. This tower plays a crucial role in the functionality of the Mechazilla catching arms, as it houses critical systems for communication, stabilization, and sensor feedback. Any damage to this infrastructure could compromise the precision needed for a successful booster catch. SpaceX likely chose not to risk damaging the booster, the arms, or the tower itself, and instead opted for a safe splashdown to gather recovery data. Another possible reason is that Flight 6 might have been planned as a test of alternative recovery methods. While catching the booster midair is the ultimate goal, SpaceX still needs to collect data on controlled splashdowns. These tests are essential for situations where a tower catch isn't feasible, such as launches from other locations or under certain weather conditions. By splashing down the booster in the Gulf of Mexico, SpaceX could analyze how it performs during a controlled water landing, further refining its design and recovery process. Meanwhile, the upper stage of the spacecraft, Ship 31, continued its mission and achieved a key milestone by reigniting its Raptor engines in space. This was the first successful in-space reignition for the Starship program, a critical capability for future missions that require orbital adjustments, payload deployments, or interplanetary transfers. Ship 31 reached an altitude of approximately 118 miles, or 190 kilometers, completing a partial orbit around Earth. This demonstrated the vehicle's capability to sustain operations in space and marked a significant step forward in the development of the upper stage. After completing its planned trajectory, Ship 31 initiated its descent back to Earth. This phase tested the spacecraft's thermal protection system under re-entry conditions. Following re-entry, Ship 31 executed a controlled splashdown in the Indian Ocean. This marked the successful conclusion of its mission further validating the spacecraft's landing systems and providing critical data for future flights. According to Musk, the first uncrewed Starship mission to Mars could take place as early as 2026 or 2027, with a crewed mission potentially following in 2028 or 2029. To achieve these ambitious timelines, SpaceX has outlined a clear strategy to scale its operations and ensure the readiness of the Starship system for interplanetary missions. Musk has expressed a vision of launching up to 1,000 Starship missions per year. This high launch cadence is essential for establishing a sustainable human presence on Mars. To support this, SpaceX is expanding its launch infrastructure. At the Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas, the company is constructing additional launch towers. Musk also mentioned that Starship Vi-3, which is expected to fly in about a year, will be three times more powerful than Saturn V. The Starship development program has been designed to evolve through multiple versions, with each introducing significant improvements over the previous one. The initial version, often referred to as Block 1, was used for the first six integrated flight tests. This version has since been retired to make way for more advanced iterations. The second version, known as Block 2, was announced in early 2024 and includes several major upgrades. These upgrades include a thinner forward flap design, which is positioned more leeward, an increase in propellant capacity by 25%, an integrated vented interstage, and a taller structure overall. The payload capacity of Block 2 is expected to reach at least 100 tons to orbit in a reusable configuration. One key feature of Block 2 is its use of the new Raptor 3 engines, which eliminates the need for additional engine shielding. The first Block 2 vehicle, Ship 33, is already under production and features Raptor 2 engines as an intermediate step. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.